Hi, I'm Adam Haney with Mora Technologies, and today I want to talk about arrays and how we can use array in, arrays and PLCs to quickly scale out a PLC project. I'm sure there's been instances where we've had uh, a bunch of field devices that are identical. So a bunch of motors or drives or valves that have the same interface. They're, they're the same type of drive, and we want to pull the same type of data off of each drive. So we create a function block for that. But if we're using ladder or, or function block diagram, we get into a situation where we're calling this function for 100 motors over and over again, and we have to manually go through and, and change the parameters for each call so that we can get the data from each individual drive. And arrays allow us, uh, arrays in conjunction with for loops, allow us to quickly scale out if we have to change from, let's say, 10 motors to 20 motors, we can make a change with very little effort. And so what is an array? An array is a data type that is a collection of identical data types. So uh, an example of this would be a collection of 10 bytes. And each byte is to be treated individually, and it can have its own value. And we can access them from the same parent data type, which is the array. So let me pull up a whiteboard and kind of talk about how data is stored in PLCs and computers. So we know that data in computers and PLCs are stored in binary data, so ones and zeros. And while different manufacturers have different ways of absolutely addressing a tag, for example, in our PLC programs, at the lowest level, it's stored at a memory address. And so let's say we are creating an array of 10 bytes, the 10 elements of data type byte, OK? So I want a collection of 10 elements that are unique from each other, but they're of the data type byte. Well, if I were to create this in a PLC, let's say I have a starting memory address of 1,000 decibel. And I know that because this is my data type that's been in, kept inside my array is a byte. I know that the second element, so the first element will be stored at 1,000. The second element will be stored at 1,001. That's where it's going to start. So if I needed it, when I, tell, when I tell the PLC to access the first element of my array, it's going to say, OK, I need to go to memory address 1,000 and grab that value and return it to the program. And the same idea if I grab the second element of my array, it's going to go, OK, I need to go to 1,001, grab that value, and bring it back. And the way that we access elements in an array is with this bracket notation. So if it's zero-based addressing, array zero would be the first element in my array. If it was the second element for zero-based, so that'd be a one, it would just say, OK, all I got to do is shift over a byte to grab that value and bring it back to the PLC program. And if this is an array that's 10 elements long, so if I wanted to see what the 10th element is stored at, well, that's address 1009. Because I say 1000, 1001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 10 elements. So if I wanted to access the ninth element, it would just shift over nine bytes to get that last element and return it. So let's see how this actually applies to PLC programming. So we've got a demo project. And here I've got a visualization for five motors. But if I start this, if I log in, I can see that only three motors are operable, right? I can start and stop these motors. And I have a simulation going on for the speed and for the torque feedback. But this fourth and fifth motor, there's nothing there. And, and I, in fact, I have errors in my diagnostics saying, hey, there's no, there's no instance of a fourth motor. There's no instance of a fifth motor. So if we look at my program, log out, what I've done is I've created two arrays. I've created a motor array and a simulation array. And, and logically, these are linked because I'm saying that I've got motors in the field. And they're patterned off of this function block motor right here. And my simulation is just making up values to send to that motor function block. And so when I create these arrays, 
I'm saying start at one and you're gonna have a length or the total size of your array is gonna be from one to motor num. And motor num is this constant that I've created that's currently set to three. And we're using a constant because if our arrays are gonna hold objects that exist in the field, like real motors, real valves, real drives, we don't want them to change at runtime. We don't want this motor num value, value to be overwritten and all of a sudden our array changes and it doesn't reflect what's really in the field. So I've got a constant there. So it can't be changed once I've compiled and I've started this PLC and it can't be changed. And so this is the reason why on our visualization, we only can work with three of those start stop controls, the speed and torque feedback. It's because it's because I've only said, hey, you're only supposed to hold three objects of the function block motor type. You, you're only, you only have three instances of function block motor. But if I were to change this to five really quickly, and I were to build my project, I'm gonna log in, log in with download. And then start my PLC. If I go back to my, my visualization, you can see that those errors have cleared. And I can start and stop motor four and five, and they operate with the same behavior as one through three, and that's because they're patterned off the same function block. All I've done is increase the size of the array so it can hold more objects, more function block motor objects. And the way that this works really cleanly by just changing that one constant from three to five is because I've got four loops down here. So my four loops are iterating or they're, it's, it's, going over my array element by element and it's saying hey access the first element you know on the first time through this for loop it's saying my counter is equal to one i'm going to go from one to my motor number so right now it's five each time i go through the loop i'm going to increase my counter by one and what you're going to do is you're going to go to the motor array and you're going to go to the first element in that array and then the second time through the loop it says go to the second element in that array and the third time, the third element, and so on and so forth until it gets to motor num. And so it's kind of trivial when you go from three to five, but if you imagine that you had to scale a project from 10 to 20 or 50 to 100, you know, this kind of approach to PLC programming is really powerful and it cuts down on production time and it gives you a lot of flexibility in, uh, in how you write your programs. Uh, and this IDE right here is back off TwinCat 3. I really enjoy it. Um, and, and we can see also, if I go back to my runtime, that this hasn't really added any time to my overall uh, cycle time. And, and that's because this for loop is the same behavior as if I had just called the function block, the motor function block five times in a row in ladder. It's the same idea. It's just, this is much more com compact. And to see how this would affect process time, I can change this to 20,000 just to really push it out there. I can rebuild my project. I can log in with download. And I can start my PLC. And you see now with 20,000 elements in both the uh, simulation and motor array, right? Because my motor number is 20,000 and my array is from one to motor num, so there's 20,000 objects in each of these arrays. My total cycle time is only, for these two loops, is bouncing between two and seven. And I'm only using one core right now, and you can see that my core load is around 34% down here. So I hope this has been a good example of how incorporating structured text and arrays into PLC programming adds a lot of flexibility and, uh, and allows you to really easily scale a program. Thank you.